Welcome back to the Arena at Gwinnett Center SEC Championships in rotation two. Young Georgia fan here. There are a lot of Georgia fans here. It's probably about an hour away from Athens, and that means there's going to be a lot of people cheering for gymnasts like Chelsea Bird, senior for the Gym Dogs up on vault. I remember last year at the SEC Championship, she scored a perfect 10 here. Not this time. She takes the step, but a phenomenal vault. Chelsea, 2003 SEC Gymnast of the Year, along with Gina Rice from Alabama. She gets a 9.925, still a good score. What really impresses the judges and these fans here is the height she gets off this vaulting table. She rockets that vault into the air. She just has to get the landing. For the Florida Gators, freshman Katie Rue from Maryland up on floor. Very cute music to this routine. You can hear that already. And potentially a big score for Florida. They're looking to build off of Brianne's 9.85. Just before her full and back out, she twists early, not enough rotation, and her hands are on the floor. That's a 5 tenths deduction. And a loss of the difficulty of that skill. And remember, Lori, that Florida already has an out-of-bounds deduction. They had that happen. Orly smooched their first competitor up, so that means all these other deductions really can start to add up, and Florida needs to be very careful. Right now, they will be forced to count that 9675 from Orly Smooch, and that will definitely bring down their floor total. Second pass, a double pike. Ooh. She steps out of bound there again. That's a one tenth deduction. Nice clean double turn to a popa. Last pass, whip half, front full. So Florida will miss a big score from Katie Rue. Certainly this one will be much lower than she would have hoped at 9.25. That will be the score. Florida hopes to drop it. Either way, Lloyd, they're going to have some making up to do after this first rotation. That's a tough position after the first event to be playing makeup. There's a second pass, the double pike. She lands right in the corner and steps out of bounds. We've already seen Gina Rice for Alabama once tonight. That pretty bars routine, 9.95. She's the anchor in that event. She'll be the anchor in this event, which is beam. But take a look back. This is a few weeks ago. She has a fall, a very rare mistake for this gymnast. Ever since then, I just wasn't used to falling, so it kind of threw my confidence a little bit. And then uh, continuing on the year, uh, I never quite regained it until like the past couple weeks in competition. And I really feel like I've grown a lot on beam and found my confidence again. So I think I'll, I'll be doing better. Although it's not ideal, sometimes a mistake like that is just what a top athlete needs to get them back on track. And she got the wink and nod of confidence from her head coach, Sarah Patterson. The pressure is on Gina. Remember, Marie Bear has already had a fall. She must hit. And as we've heard Gina say earlier, she likes that pressure. It's, how she, it's where she thrives. Perhaps an SEC title rides on this performance here. It's almost impossible to win an SEC conference title counting a fall. Wolf jump, straddle jump, straddle jump. Clean and confident. If Gina can get past this tumble series, then my bets are on her for a hit. I can't even lay out, lay out, solid as can be. I think she's going to make you a winner there, Lori. <laughs> she certainly looks as confident and as good as we've seen her look all year. Wolf three quarter. Again, a difficult jump, landing sideways on the beam. On small back handspring, that is a gym acro. So confident, she's even giving us a smile after each element. She is so on, so precise, even in her dance. But the dismount's big. Here it is. Round off, double twist, not a movement on the landing. That is the routine the Tide needed right now.
And boy, Gina Rice coming up huge yet again, a 9.975. And Lori, I don't know that I've ever seen an athlete look as confident and in the zone as Gina looked during this routine. Not many mistakes in this routine. There's the tumble series back handspring, lay out, lay out. She was so aggressive and so quick. And the final competitor in this rotation for the Florida Gators, Aaron Dooley, who we, as we mentioned in the open, coming off a great all-around performance. She is capable of putting up a very big score, and right now, it needs it. Florida has some ground to make up. They need to get a big 9 9-9, 9-9-5 here to make up for that 9-6-7-5 they are currently counting. Aaron's the anchor in this event for a reason. She's led the team on floor for the past five meets. Florida's also dealing with an emotional blow that occurred during the warm-up. One of their top beam and bar workers, Kristen Stuckey, hurt her knee. She is out of this competition. They have to fill the lineup with other competitors. Kristen has already undergone seven knee surgeries, so what an emotional blow for this team. They really need to block that out, try to do the best for Kristen. And Aaron is a co-captain along with Kristen Stuckey, and it really comes down to your leaders. You need them to come through for you at, at points like this. And Aaron is so positive for this team. She's having such fun this year, but it is no fun when one of your top athletes and best friends goes out with a big injury, but Aaron comes through for the team once again. Florida needs some big scores here. And Aaron Dooley gets it, a 9.925. That's exactly what the Florida Gators needed. And Aaron Dooley coming through when she needed to. Florida finishes, though, with a 49.15 in this rotation, much lower than they're used to. Georgia with a nice score on vault, a 49.55. Ties a season high. And we've got rotation number three coming up. Welcome back to the SEC Championships at the arena at Gwinnett Center. I'm Jen Hildreth along with Lori Strong-Ballard. Happy to be bringing you this meet. And just how good a conference is the SEC? Well, we'll let the coaches tell you. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it is definitely, um, in my opinion, uh, the strongest conference for gymnastics in the country. And it's... Um, you know, it's going to be a, a dogfight out there. I think if you are competitive within the SEC in any sport, that you are competitive for the national championship. And I certainly think that is true for women's gymnastics. You know, I've been a part of the Pac-10, which is a great conference, and the Big Ten, which is a great conference. Um, but the difference here is the intensity, um, the crowd. I mean, you know, 10,000 people, you can't replace that energy in any way, shape, or form. And so to me, the competition is outstanding, but the environment is so much more exciting. And we're really excited to go out there and be a part of that. Some argue the Pac-10 is as strong as the SEC with UCLA leading the nation right now, but the SEC has won three team titles in the last six years and nine overall. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's got to put them up there with anybody. You just got to look at the lineups for this rotation. LSU competing on vault. This is Nikki Butler, the freshman from Virginia Beach. Chenko layout full, great landing. Bob Moore likes it, assistant coach and their vault coach. Well, Nikki's been just improving and improving on this event all season long. She gets a 9.875. We'll take another look. She comes onto the table with a little bit bent arms right there, which kind of hinders the height that she could get from this vault, but what a landing. Auburn Tigers on bars for this rotation, Atika Johnson has got some pretty big fans in the crowd. Her parents, Richard and Cherry Johnson, they're cheering her on. Now, we should tell you that Natika actually hurt her knee on vault in the first rotation and is still competing on bars. What a gutsy performer because she knows she needs to be in there for her team. She is competing under pain. Luckily, this is not a weight-bearing event. The only concern here will be the dismount. Hop to a Pike Yeager right into her pack Salto. Beautiful combination. Rise to handstand. Here comes the dismount. We'll see if the knee can hold it. Mm. Little stumble on the landing. 
She's not sure. She was not sure what kind of pain she was going to feel on that landing. That's a tough routine. Not a scary thing to do, too, to have to land and not know how your knee's going to take it. But Natika winds up with a 9.775 and comes through and performs for her team. I know the Auburn Tigers grateful for that. On beam, Stacey O'Kee from the University of Kentucky. This has been a tough event for Kentucky all year. Remember, this is their last team competition. So these athletes are gaining some great experience here, competing in front of these big crowds under high pressure. Stacy falls under tumble series by handspring layout. And as you said, this has been a bit of a trouble spot for Kentucky, an area that I'm sure Mo Mohammed is going to look to try to build on and improve in the coming seasons. Well, this is just such a tough event in itself. You're performing on a four inch wide beam. You're under pressure. You really have to focus on your technique. You cannot hold back. Two tough things to do when you're under this kind of stress. It's also an event I believe it takes years to master. So many numbers in the gym, and it's also important to get that competition experience, to get out there and compete in front of the judges when there are expectations. Stacy, just a sophomore. She's got a few more years to go here for the Wildcats. She's had a smooth, calming rhythm throughout the entire routine. There's a dismount front full, pretty good on the landing. And of course, that score is going to be low. The fall brings it down to a 9.15. And as we said, this is an event Kentucky's been working on, trying to improve on, so just sort of taking some steps toward the future. But Arkansas is competing on floor in this rotation. Dana McQuillan, team co-captain, and competing in the all-around tonight. Opening pass, nice high double tuck. Arkansas counted a fall on beam, so they really need to make up ground here. This is a good event for them. Front layout, front layout half. Dana's one of four Arkansas gymnasts to have won a floor title this season, so they've got some good depth. Dana's kind of a shy athlete, but she's coming out of her shell here on floor, showing some expression. Renee Cook has done an excellent job in choreographing these routines and really allowing the gymnast to bring in the audience and to pull in the judge as well. Renee told me it was important to come up with routines that were exciting and fun to watch and that, that really brought the crowd into it from the very start. Remember, in a meet like this, you've got to really fight for that crowd's attention because there are three other events going on at the same time. Final pass, deep breath. It's a tough one and a big one. Her most difficult pass at the end, a double pike. Great routine for Dana. Dana's just so solid. She comes through when she needs to. That's why they put her toward the end of the lineup. She comes up with a 9.9 .9 on floor. We said they had a fall on beam. Well, they've actually already had a fall on floor and out-of-bounds deduction. So Dana McQuillan comes through for the gym backs. 